who will present his ICCV 2019 paper, Adversarial Feedback Loop. Firaz, please go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for staying here. Uh, still, you hope you're still awake. Um, going to present uh, our work about adversarial feedback loop. It was, as said, presented in, IC, in ICCV last, uh, last month. I'll start with a saying by Elon Musk that captures the idea behind our work. So I read, I think it's very important to have a feedback loop where you're constantly thinking about what you've done and how you could doing it better. Our work is about GANs and how to improve them. I hope you're familiar with the several building blocks that exist here. Um, I'll present here some simple case of, of GAN, but our method is applicable to other types of, gun, <coughs> of GANs. What we see here, what do we see here, is a state-of-the-art result of a method that was uh, presented uh, last year by um, NVIDIA. We can see that they are very nice results. They are almost undetectable. But even, those, uh, uh, even the same method, the same network, can achieve such a result. They are not only uh, have artifacts, but in, in all kind of levels, also in uh, abstract, also in the uh, low level. So what happens here and how can we deal with such an issue? Currently, uh, uh, as long as I know, there are no methods that target this issue in GANs. So if we look at a training session um, that, that, that includes both a generator and a discriminator, so they are both trained through all the session. The generator is trained to fool the discriminator with a, a good-looking um, output. And the discriminator still uh, try to uh, separate between those fake uh, outputs and the real output that we get from the data set. In test time, we assume that the generator is already fully trained and it can live by himself. Uh, so we drop the discriminator in test time. But unfortunately, as we see, as we saw just in the a couple of slides ago, generator still uh, generate artifacts, and in, in all kind of, of guns we see uh, this issue. And what we want to do here is we want to detect those areas and know what kind of features are fake here, and we want to fix them. It, it, conceptually, if we look at the right side of the uh, slide, we can see that for us it's really annoying that this red circle is far away from the distribution of the of the green ones, which is the real data. And it's easy just to push it to the right the distribution. So the question here was our, is, is whether we have such a model that can detect those artifacts and tell us what, what are those artifacts and what are the, the bad features. And the, the answer is yes, of course, the discriminator. It already has, um, it already learned the distribution of the real of the real data, so why not using it in test time? And it can also detect the fake features from the real features. So the question is how to uh, fuse this uh, model into a GAN network, and how can we fix the generator result according to the hints that are provided by the discriminator? So that's what we propose. In, in our proposal, we say we um, add the feedback models, that's what you see here in red, that passes or feed, forward, feed backward the information from the discriminator to a generator in a second pass in order to provide a better results. So how can, we how can we train such a setup? So first, we, ask, we train GAN regularly, or uh, an alternative way is to get uh, pre-trained networks uh, until here, it's a normal GAN uh, setup. In the second phase, we add our feedback models, we freeze the generator, and I train uh, the feedback models on the same objective as the first phase. This, the discriminator here is also, uh, is, is also part of the training. We don't keep it as is. Conceptually, we can think of it as, as if the discriminator can tell us what details look fake in the image, and where are the spatial locations of them. And the feedback models translate them into corrections 
to the latent space of the generator. Again, the feedback models are optimized to provide those corrections. If we get dive even further to the uh, conv layers level, an input is, is passed into the generator layers. It gets its output. If the output is uh, evaluated by the discriminator, on the way, it also calculates some very informative um, features about the image. The feedback models use this information in order to transfer them into uh, corrections. Those corrections are multiplied then by a alpha parameter. This alpha parameter can control the contribution of the, uh, of the feedback models. This alpha is set to one during training, but in test time we can control it. So you can control how much correction you want to have in the, in the test time. And eventually you get some uh, new results that, that look very similar to the first one, but much better. So if you wonder what is that feedback model, so it's a very tiny network. In its basic form, uh, it's comprised of two conf net, two, two conf box, sorry. So let's see what we can do with this. First, a uh, very popular uh, challenge that is addressed in, uh, for every new GAN is um, unconditional image generation on a Cypher 10 dataset. So uh, this dataset includes uh, 10, uh, 10 times of objects, for each one a lot of images of uh, 32 by 32. And the challenge here, which GANs pr provide the best uh, quality of images. So in order to show that our results is applicable to a variant of, uh, of methods. We chose three different methods, ranging from a good to a better. So we picked DCGAN, WGAN, GP, and SNGAN, which each, for each one of them, we added one feedback loop uh, in one layer. And for each one of them, we achieved a better score in terms of the inception sc score. A higher is better here. So for, for each one of them, we achieved a better score. That's it on, uh, in the Cypher 10 dataset. Let's move to uh, uh, Celeb A dataset. Here, uh, the images are a little, little bit bigger, so we can see the impact by uh, uh, visually. So let's move directly to the output. So those results that we see from the baseline, uh, it's a full batch. So there are no chair pick here. Uh, after adding our feedback models, that's what we get. I hope I can be seen here. That's before and after, before, after. I hope you can see it through the, the screen. Um, if you move to some uh, quantitative comparison, so those results we see in over our average over uh, 50,000 samples. And here on, on, uh, in, the, in the Y axis here, we see an FID. It's a score where lower is better. It actually captures the difference between uh, the generated between the generated data and the trained data. So lower is better again. In the X axis, there, it's the alpha parameter that tunes the corrections. And we see here when the tuning, when the, this, uh, this tuning parameter is set to zero, meaning that we disable the feedback, we get the same results of the original um, network. While, we, wh while when we use a higher values of alpha, for each one, we get a better results. It, all those results are, are, are achieved with the same training. There are no, there are no retraining here. Uh, again, only for w playing in test time with this alpha parameter. Here we see um, a minimum value for the FID as a, in, in, the, in the value of uh, 0.5. So the question here whether we can achieve better score for even more challenging um, applications or problems. For that, we chose the super resolution problem where it's uh, very challenging and um, the top performer GAN network was in the, won the, the premium super resolution challenge last year. So we took this GAN network. It was uh, challenging uh, because it includes a, a couple of uh, losses in its 
uh, objective, not only one. And its structure is differ fundamentally from the, the discriminator and generator. It's not a classic GAN structure. With that said, after adding a feedback loop with all the four measures that are uh, commonly used in uh, super resolution, uh, we achieve the better results using uh, a feedback loop for the measure of perceptual index, RMSE, PCNR, SSIM, for all of them we achieve better results. Uh, to go quickly to visual results, these are the baseline results. This is our after adding our feedback module, this before and after. Here we see another sample. So we see a lot of artifacts here. Um, before and after, we see that all the artifacts were gone. And the last, in the last slide, we've seen that we got a sharper image. So here, the feedback loop uh, uh, detected the artifacts and detected the blurred images, the blurred location, and it was sharp. And the noise were where um, the noise were removed. That's actually thank you. Thank you, Firas. Any quick question from the audience? So let's thank our speaker again. Uh,